This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Over the past few weeks, I've been experimenting with jelly gouache as a tool for miniature painting, and the results have been surprising. I had heard that one of my favorite paint lines, Golden So Flat paints, are basically just artist gouache. So naturally, I wanted to see what other forms of gouache were out there and if any of them could be used for miniature painting. Doing a quick search online, it seemed like this set in particular from the brand Himi was extremely popular, and for good reason. The results that I was able to find online, at least when painting these paints on paper or canvas, looked extremely good. And in the basic set, you get 18 colors, each in these 30 milliliter cups, for just $25 Canadian, which is like a third or maybe even a quarter of what I'm used to paying for miniature paints. In addition to this, these paints are completely non-toxic, which for someone like me with a lot of anxiety around uh, chemicals, is extremely important. When unboxing this set, I was extremely impressed with both the design of the box and everything in it. It has the form factor and branding of a makeup product, and I was extremely excited to get it open. Inside the box, there are 18 colors of paint, three lovely synthetic brushes, as well as a plastic palette. The paint containers look like little McNugget sauces and they have the same creamy texture as well. And the way that this works is that you open them up, they stay in this reusable container and it kind of works like a watercolor palette. In fact, these paints actually have a lot in common with watercolors as we will soon discover. When I first opened my personal box of Himi gouache, I found some of the colors looked a little bit like the medium had separated from the pigments. So I used some paper clips to give them all a little mix before using them. And instead of just wasting the paint that I mixed up with the paper clips, I wiped it off onto the palette to make use of later. As my first test model, I decided to use Lambda Star Current from Broken Anvil Miniatures. I primed her in black as that's what I'm used to using when I'm painting with Golden So Flat paints, and I assumed that this gouache would work in sort of the same way. But sadly, I was woefully misinformed about this, as jelly gouache is apparently not the same as acrylic gouache. The issue here is that these are basically watercolors, and because of that, they do reactivate with water. And I don't mean the kind of reactivation we see with the classic speed paints line, where you can use it to your advantage and sort of blend with it a bit. I mean, full on, you add a drop of water to this thing, everything dissolves. Because of this, I tried mixing in a variety of acrylic mediums to both thin the paints down, but also to help counteract this extreme reactivation. But to be honest, it was pretty hard to make these things work. However, I discovered there is one thing these paints are extremely good at when using them on miniatures. But before I tell you about that, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website creation and hosting platform that I've been using for over a decade now to suit all of my website needs. You just pick any of the pre-made templates that looks good to you, add in as many pages as you might want, and then customize things to your heart's content using their extremely well-designed drag and drop grid system. No coding or technical knowledge required. I've been using my own personal Squarespace site for just a little bit over a year now to house all of my hobby progress, reference documents, as well as being a home for my online store. And I've been really happy with the results so far. So if you need a website, why not check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. So in my second few experiments with these paints, I figured if these paints behave like watercolors, maybe they would behave better on a completely white primed surface. So I gave that a try and I did find it worked a little bit better and it certainly does give a unique texture and feel, but it's still a little bit hard to work with. You really need to thin these paints down to make them work with miniatures and that does limit their use quite a bit. So after quite a bit of trial and error on various models, I had a realization. In previous videos on this channel, I've compared the classic speed paint formula, not the new one, to oil paints. 
in that you have infinite time to blend with them, you just have to avoid mixing in any water. These paints work in a similar way, but they actually have the texture of oil paints as well. So this led me to the question, can jelly gouache be used as a non-toxic, faster drying oil paint? If true, this could be a major breakthrough for my own painting progress, as well as for the painting community at large, as the thing stopping a lot of us from experimenting with oil paints is that they're a bit of a mess, there's a lot of fumes, you need proper ventilation, and you need somewhere to let them dry for 24 hours. So I had the thought that if these did work like oil paints, it could be a really valuable addition to both my and a lot of other people's workflows. So on my next test, I tried using these in the same way that a lot of YouTubers recommend using oil paints on miniatures. I gave this sister of battle an extremely quick and dirty coat of acrylic, focusing on bright colors and not putting in any shadows, and then I let it dry fully and sit for a few hours. I then started applying the jelly gouache on top of the acrylic in the same way that I would use oil paints. I thinned them down a little bit with water, applied them really quick and dirty, and then I tried using a sponge to remove the excess. It took quite a while to get the hang of this method, but it was quite fun and gave what I think are interesting and unique results. I eventually switched from removing the excess paint with a sponge to just removing it with a damp brush, and I also tried using a damp q-tip for this, which I think worked best out of all three methods. But yes, in the end, these do seem to work like oil paints, at least from what I can tell. It's the same workflow, you just use water instead of mineral spirits when you want to thin things down or blend them, and the basic workflow is that you apply a color, then use a damp brush to either blend it with the colors around it or remove the color's excess entirely. When you're done, you can then either apply a coat of varnish and call it done as a sort of impressionist looking piece like I did with this sister novitiate, or you can add any more finishing touches you might like with some standard acrylics on top of your existing gouache coat. It's definitely not a perfect workflow and it does require more experimentation, but as with everything, this is just another tool in our toolbox as painters. And if you want to try it out, it's available pretty widely in North America from what I can see, especially on Amazon. They have multiple different bundles with different colors, and from what I can tell, these paints will last quite a long time as you're not using very much for painting miniatures. These paints will eventually dry out if you leave the box open for too long, but all you need to do is keep a a spray bottle of water on hand and give them a little spritz whenever they get too dry. And speaking of oil paints, one of my favorite ways to use these jelly gouache paints is to use them in the same way that a lot of people like to use oil paints, and that is oil washes. Here you can see I painted this awesome boar model from Dungeons & Lasers upcoming Kickstarter, link down in the description if you want to check those models out, in a slap chop style using the new speed paints and speed paint metallics. And after giving the model several hours to dry, I busted out my jelly gouache, slapped several earthy looking colors down onto my palette, thinned them down with water, and then applied them to the model like a traditional wash. I wasn't careful at all about where I applied this, and I just slapped it on where I thought it looked good on the model. And after giving this pig a few hours to dry, I took a damp q-tip and just ran it carefully over the surface of the model. This has the effect of removing the gouache from the most raised surfaces of the model, but leaving all of the deepest crevices untouched and shaded. From what I can tell, this is essentially all the benefits of an oil wash without the muss and fuss of using oils. Whereas with oil washes, I hear you're supposed to give it a full 24 hours to dry, you can do this after just a few hours of the paint drying. And in my opinion, I think it looks pretty good. It gave this little piggy a really grungy look with a lot of deep and vibrant shading. If anything, it makes things look maybe a little bit too desaturated, so I might want to go back in at a later date and add some highlights to the model. The third way that I found to use these paints is a little bit experimental, but I thought I would mention it in the case that you want to try experimenting with these paints yourself. So just as an experiment, I thinned these paints down to the consistency of watercolors and gave this second hippo a sort of watercolor wash with the gouache colors over a plain white undercoat. I then waited a full 24 hours, and after this, I started applying highlights to the model using traditional acrylics. I found that by waiting this long, it gave the base coat of gouache a slightly different texture than waiting for it to dry for only a few hours. It reactivated a lot less and it was much easier to blend with traditional acrylics. 
I continued working on top of the thin gouache base coat with traditional acrylics and I found that I really liked how the paints mixed with the gouache base coat. And because the gouache had a full 24 hours to dry before I put any acrylics on top of it and the layers I used were so thin, I found they were much easier to blend together with the acrylics and the result was a really fun painting session where the base coat blended in slightly with any colors I put on top of it. So that is all of my current opinions on using jelly gouache as a substitute for oil paints. If you want to try these paints out for yourself, I've left a Amazon affiliate link down in the description to the set that I ordered. I wouldn't say these paints are a must buy or anything, but they sure are an interesting and different type of paint than I've ever tried before, and they are quite a cheap investment compared to most miniatures paints. Thank you to all of our lovely patrons for supporting this channel and allowing me to do more experimental videos like this without worrying about the algorithm. If you want to support the channel directly, gain access to voting and polls, and our lovely exclusive inclusive Discord server, you can do so over at patreon.com slash Dana Howell. I would also like to thank our editor Amy for editing this video, a link to her channel is up on the channel right now, and I would also like to thank you specifically for watching this video all the way to the end. So. Special thanks to you, and I will see you in the next video.